You know, if you ask any customer what they want from their new kitchen, most of them will say that they want more work surface and more storage units. But this isn't the TARDIS. How are you going to achieve that extra space without moving the walls out? Well, in many cases, there is a very simple solution. A radiator takes up valuable space, which could otherwise be used for storage and worktop. But you still want to heat the kitchen. So how are you going to do that? Well, the answer is in this tiny box, the Smith Space Saver. So what we have is a fan convector heater. Now, if that rings alarm bells and you're thinking they're expensive to run, well, they are when they're run by electricity, but this actually uses the water from your boiler and blows that warm air out into the room. So it's not actually using electricity to heat the elements. It's exactly the same technology as you use in a car. When you switch that heater on in the morning, it's blowing warm air into the car. It's coming from the engine. In this case, it's coming from the boiler. The really clever bit about this is that it's got a sensor so it won't blast out cold air. It actually waits until the water that's coming through the heater is warm enough and then it automatically switches on. So you can just leave this thing on standby all the time. Whenever the heating system comes on, this will kick into action. And of course, if you're doing a lot of cooking and things like that, you want it off, it's a simple flick of a switch. So I'm gonna show you just how easy this is to fit. So first thing we need to do is get this radiator off the wall so we can connect that new Smith Space Saver heater onto the flow and return. Now it doesn't really matter whether we've got micro-bore system, small-bore system, whatever it is, we can get a fitting to get this from there onto the flexible connections which are on the heater. Remove the water from the system and undo the radiator. Obviously there'll be a little bit of water in the radiator which you'll have to catch and then we can get onto that pipework. Undo those valves. Obviously there's going to be a small dribble of water. So once we've got the radiator off the wall and we're left with the radiator valves poking up, we want to get rid of those. We cut the pipe off, get rid of it, get back to a bit of straight pipe. And then we can simply pop on isolating valves. The flexible connectors that come with the space saver are generous and that allows us to connect up and bring that into the front of a plinth. Then we can close the valves off, refill the system, get the system up and running again. Then we can fit the space saver at a later date. Now I've got the tails in and the isolating valves turned off, so I need to put some water back in the heating system. If you're not sure how to do this, every heating system is slightly different, but the instructions are on the inside of the boiler and makes it nice and easy. Now with that done, we can switch on the heating in the hot water. The customer can get back to normal, even though the heater hasn't yet been fitted. So I worked out where it's going to go. It's got to miss the legs of the unit. That's one thing. So I'm going to center it on these two doors here. With the flexible tails, which are conveniently under here, we can move it about a bit, so it's not too critical. One thing that is critical, get it the right way up. It's got the logo on the front and it looks silly if it's upside down. Now I've got a little tip here. A lot of people, when they put compression fittings onto copper, they use a load of jointing paste. It's not great. What I do is just wrap the olive in a little bit of PTFE, not on the thread, on the olive itself. Now the great thing here, it doesn't matter which one's the flow and return. So if you've forgotten to label that up or you're not sure you've drained the system down, you haven't got a clue which one is which, it won't actually make any practical difference to this heater. Now, apart from that, turning on the isolating valves, that's the plumbing finish. So we can test the unit up, we can check that it's all watertight very quickly. And then all we've got is a simple bit of electrical work to do. They give you a nice long lead here. So I'm gonna tuck that up behind the units in a minute, bring that up to a fuse spur. You can put a thermostat on the unit, but most people just prefer to have it on a fuse spur. You just leave it on. When the heating comes on, the thing fires up. If you're doing a Sunday roast and it's getting a bit hot in the kitchen, it's a simple matter to just flick it off up at the fuse spur or down at the controls here, which is easy enough to do. 
Okay, we've got the plinth back in position. We're all connected up. I just like to undo the valve here, just get any air out of the system. You can do this at any time you like, but I like to do it before I put it in because it just proves that I haven't forgotten to turn those isolating valves on and then slide the whole thing back into position. And now there's just one more very important thing. Whenever a fuse spur is supplied, it's always supplied with a 13 amp fuse, but the space saver has a very low power consumption. All it needs is a three amp fuse, and it's important that you swap it over. And we're ready to go, just two screws on the front, job's done. So what have we achieved with that very simple installation? Well, certainly a lot more worktop and also a lot more storage space. Just what the customer ordered.